Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Touch Tennis Show. I'm afraid I have, uh, yeah, really done, not done the greatest of jobs technically tonight. Um, the lights aren't actually on properly, or I look darker than normal. Maybe it's just I've got a tan, I'm not sure. Um, yeah. Alongside me, Chris Eaton, as always. Hey, guys. <laughs> Mine's better. Fair enough. This says, play tennis or die, bones. A new uh, company that we've got on board that are going to be providing us with clothing. Um, we uh, had a little hit outside. Now, the reason we're so late tonight, I'm um, sorry if you're wondering, was we did have it all good. Missed call, we've got a missed that call. Was me. Me. That was you testing it, was yeah. it? And that was me thinking it was someone phoning in to abuse us. Um, what happened was we recorded a piece where Chris Eaton was demonstrating why Federer got schooled today by um, that rugby player um, who <laughs> wields a racket occasionally. I mean, you, you read about some of the results, saw a bit of the match. What did you think? Uh, you just got to sort of say, wow. I mean, mm. Songa is just a beast. Yeah. You know, he's, you know, and I've, I've obviously walked, you know, been, been around Songa a little bit, so I sort of know how big he is. And it's just sort of the chest and the shoulders, and he's just... Is he really that big? I mean, I've ne I don't think I've ever seen him up close. Yeah. I've only ever seen him on tennis courts from quite a distance. Yeah, no, he really is. Like, his chest and his shoulders, and he kind of, he walks it as well. And, yeah. You know, it's it's just... And you sort of, you, he's one of those people you sort of look at and you just think, that shouldn't be, that person, that body shape shouldn't be that nimble. Yeah. But yeah, he's just so powerful, so athletic. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's just, he is almost the perfect specimen of a tennis player. Really? I mean, does he move as well as some of the top four? I think, I think if you, I think he's, he's the type of guy that if you put, if you put him in all sorts of um, physical testing, yeah. you know, like agility, speed, that sort of stuff, I think he'd smash them all. Are you serious? Yeah, because he's so strong. Right. I don't think so. Like Marcus Willis, like just takes off cadence in his legs. Can just yeah, and I just, I just don't think he, because he's so again so explosive. I just don't think he has the. I don't think he technically moves as well as. As well as the other guys. I mean, I know you know lots of people will be thinking, technique, technique to moving, you know. But there's there's a way that Federer moves so efficiently. Yeah. And Murray's done a lot of hard work at trying to learn that, trying to know you know exactly the movement patterns of how to recover better, you know, how to have that half a second, yeah, you know, or even split second, quicker recovery or way out to the ball and that sort of stuff. So, you know, I think maybe that's something that he can Songa can work on. But he also he also plays a different game. You know, he's if you look at those those sort of um, you know the the Murray and the Djokovic's and to a certain extent the the Federer and Nadal, but mainly Murray Djokovic. Songa is trying to hit forehands off everything. Yeah, and he just hasn't quite got that. Um, he almost doesn't doesn't necessarily need to recover because he's just looking to be so uh, so aggressive. But he just ha doesn't have the technique of the movement. Like the Murray and and the Djokovic do, and right. Federer obviously has it very naturally. Rafa doesn't have it quite as much, but he just he's just such a hard worker. He looks like he's moving so well. Yeah, you know, and he just defends so well. I found, I mean, watching, I watched most of the match. I watched it from four all, um, and what I noticed throughout the match was, it was Federer was, I mean, he was up, he was leading, it was four two up. He had a break, and he lost the. You know, three games on the trot, went 5-4 down. Played a loose game to go love 40 at 5-6. And then clawed it back with just some genius, you know, magical work. Deuce. Massive serve down the tee. And he hits a forehand back behind it. I mean, he missed it by a country mile. I mean, at least three feet out. It was closer to the sideline of the doubles tram line than it was the singles sideline. And there was no need. Because, you know, uh, Song was in the middle of the court and going the other way. Now... The reason I bring that particular point up and, and Federer's loss was probably for a number of reasons, but my doubts about Songa are no matter what serve was coming at him, first or second serve, and I've seen this in match after match, he doesn't change position, he stands back. And I think that surely you know, you're rattling someone like Federer, you're down his throat, you, you know, you do second serve, move up a little bit. Because I mean, he gave Federer a short forehand and if Federer had put that away... You know, who knows what result we're talking Magic about tonight? Um, yeah, yeah. No, I think I think uh, certainly, certainly, you won't like this comment, but certainly in the women's game, it's something that's so underused. The women is like, I will stand here no matter who's serving at me. Yeah. This is where I stand. Right. And again, it's not something. 
you know, it's not necessarily something that that is very um, very quick to go through a player's brain. Yeah. You know, it's it's something that goes through your brain a lot quicker when you're playing someone, let's say, like Isner, and right. the ball's just flying past you. And yeah. you're just like, well, I'm not getting a rack on it. I need to change something. Whereas when you're having chances, you've just had him love 40. Yeah. You know, you're not necessarily thinking, oh, let's change something up here. You're yeah. probably thinking, you know, okay, keep going, keep going. We can, you know, right. I'm getting chances, just need to convert on one. So it's it's not the first sort of yeah. thought process that Songa would go through there, uh, which is probably why he didn't yeah. he didn't do it. And you know you can't really judge someone if it's worked. Yeah, I mean no, but going back to his third round match as well, and he was standing so far back that he was hitting dropping balls on the return of serve, and I can't help but think, well, surely you want to hit it at the apogee or on the rise. I mean, in the modern game, potentially, potentially you do, but then again, you know. If you look at, it's very difficult for me to sort of judge that because I've never been able to generate like Songa can. I right. mean, you know, the guy can generate so much power off nothing. That balls. potentially it doesn't matter if he's right. ten feet behind the baseline because he can still Hit laser winners. a winner from back there. Right. It's like what Rafa does. Rafa's miles behind the baseline, yeah. but you know he still fires it, you know, high and and deep, and it kind of it suits Rafa's game more than it would suit Songa's game. Right. But still, you're thinking. You know, what what what's the what's the actual thought process? And you, sometimes when Songa plays, you just think, is there a thought process? Yeah. Or is he just going with it, being French and just using his flair? Yeah. So um, you know, but he's he's very exciting to watch, and it's it's awesome that you can pick up on these things about him that he can still improve. Yeah. You know, he's certainly not the finished article. Whether he will be the finished article, because he is, like I say, he is French and he is flary, and he will always be that way you're not gonna you're not gonna get him to be as disciplined as Djokovic or a, yeah. you know or even a Murray's getting a lot more disciplined now but you know I think you're always gonna have that flary passion he's always gonna hit stupid one handed backhands and he did to them he tried to he play saw it second set on the run Federer hit probably one of the best half volley pickups I've seen and Tristan was just up the line one handed it's just a joke it's just yeah it's just I'm French yeah. but he'll also Throwing the most random drop shot at the biggest moment of the match, just yeah. out of nowhere. Is that going to cost him when he comes up against someone big, someone who doesn't mess like Ferrer, who just says, "You know what? You can do that." And if you can do that for five sets, too good. Potentially, potentially. But then again, that's why he has someone like Roger Rashid in his corner, who's very, you know, straight and narrow, regimented by, by the book. And yeah. you know, he's obviously, if you look at Roger Rashid's play, main player is obviously Hewitt. Mm. You know, on his resume, you think. You know, properly disciplined, amazingly hard worker, and that's that's probably why first Monfils and now Song yeah. have gone to him because that's exactly what they needed. I don't think uh, Roger Rashid could tame Monfils. Yeah, I don't think anybody can. I think yeah. he's having way too much fun on the tennis court, which is yeah. great to see. Yeah, but um, Songa is obviously slightly more open to that to that change because there has been a change in Songa recently, and it's yeah. obviously paying paying dividends here. Talking of Montfils and behaviour on the court, I was listening to uh, Mats Verlander and Simon Reid on air the other day. Uh, Simon's a friend, so you know, I've nothing bad to say about him. Uh, nothing bad to say about Mats, but just to disagree with him um, wholeheartedly. He said that um, Simon was saying, you know, I'd love to see some of the personalities be a bit more, you know, in your face and a bit more aggressive. They're all such nice guys, and and Mats said, yeah, but you know, Simon uh, is that German or is that I can't remember. Where's he from? I can't do is his he accent. Austrian. No, he's, he's Swedish. Okay. Is he Swedish? Yeah, his accent oh, sounds good German. <laughs> yeah, bad. Uh, but Max was saying that, you know, um, maybe the guys need a role model and they need to have a guy that can, you know, look up to and we want these guys to be nice guys. No, because look at football. I mean, John Terry is really the most unsavory character. I mean, I'll stop short of calling him scum, but, um, you know, every, that doesn't stop kids wanting to be footballers. Boxers, I mean... Really, Audley Harrison? He's a role model? You still have millions of people around the world. Kids wake up every day and say, I'm going to box. Um, so I don't think we need role models to be sure. I mean, sportsmanship is one thing, but off court, they don't need to be nice. No. Why don't they say what they think? Yeah, no, definitely. And I think, uh, I don't think you're going to, you're not going to like this comment, but they've, they've just had it with, in golf. Like uh, Tiger Woods and Sergio Garcia, anyway, so we were m- <laughs> they've been uh, they've been having a bit of a yeah that bit of an anti racist punk Garcia yeah, going on about eating Gar- chicken at his yeah, house or something. I was just exactly punk. 
Yeah, but you know that's the sort of yeah, and and then, and then but then they also they got called up on it, and in in sort of interviews and Garcia's just like, you know what, I don't like Tiger. Yeah, don't like and him. That's I'm cool. Gonna, yeah, I'm that's never cool, going to be you know? friends with him. Yeah. yeah, and Tiger's like, yeah, you know, I, I I'm not a fan of Sergio. I don't like Sergio. So that's 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 good to see, and you get that little that little bit of ants when they play together, and you know it'd be quite cool to have that with when sort of you know Federer plays Nadal or whatever it is. Yeah. But they are just such such nice guys. But I think it's difficult because in tennis, that at the level that they're playing, yeah, it is so you have to be so focused. Yeah. You lose focus for a split second, you're done. Yeah. Now, potentially, uh, certainly in the way that they they've been brought up and they've been playing their tennis, they would lose focus if they thought, "How can I rile him up? How can I right. mess with his head?" Yeah. You know, they are so. I have to deliver this. I have to deliver that. You know. So. Potentially, it's not being, you know, not not having done it for a while and that sort of stuff. But, but I think maybe I need to be brought in to coach some of these players into that. Potentially. Teach potentially. them how to wind people up on tour. Yeah, exactly. Just got a text in. I want to quickly give you a mention. Philip Reynolds has been championing touch tennis for us in Sirencester in Gloucestershire. And the launch date is the 22nd of June. He's trying to get some touch tennis players down there. If you're around, if you're around the Gloucestershire area, um, they have four brand new beautiful touch tennis courts. Uh, laid and ready on the 22nd of June. But also before that, we also have something really beautiful that I have. Um, I've not got a picture of it here, but I will have it on the website shortly. It's in Birmingham. Birmingham. Do you like that? Birmingham. Please don't Birmingham. do that again. <laughs> I, can't, I love that. Birmingham. Um, they've got uh, Yardley Tennis Club, Queens Road, Yardley, Birmingham. Uh, Birmingham, sorry, B26. 2 to 5 p.m. on Saturday the 8th of June. Please, now I'm... I beseech thee, anyone out there who is a tennis player or a touch tennis player, get down to Birmingham and support this guy. James Keatley has done more for tennis in Birmingham than you know than you could possibly imagine. He is just simply passionate about the game. The amount of stuff he does for nothing, absolutely for nothing, goes into impoverished schools and just teaches tennis. Um, right. And he's got four touch tennis courts that have been painted there in Yardley, in a public place where... The council, he said, he went to them with an idea. He said, look, and it took him two years to do it. I think it's a phenomenal job. He worked at them for two years. um, And he's got these, I mean, I'll show you this picture. It's just, you can see that there. It's beautiful. Oh, yeah, Um, they look amazing. If I could show you guys on camera there, but I doubt very much you're going to see that because most of you are watching this on an iPhone, so you won't see it. But I will post this up later. They look amazing. They're black courts with yellow lines. Uh, And, yeah, we're going to have... uh, you know, we're going to have a great launch there. It would be awesome if people could get down there um, and really help him out. 2 to 5 p.m. on Saturday. If you're around Birmingham or Manchester, do something and call in. And I believe that's our man on the ground, Nick Lester in Roland Garros. Uh, how do I do this? Hello? Hey, you're through the Touch Tennis Show. Who's that? It's Nick from Paris. Nick from Paris, our man on the ground. Doesn't I suspect you? <laughs> How are you, sir? <laughs> Ça va, mon petit? I'm very well, my friend. How are you? Very well, thanks. We've got Chris here as well. Just a little uh, shocked here at the news today that uh, my counterpart lost to Songa. And he played pretty poorly as well, to be fair. Yeah. Not just lost, he was beaten up pretty badly. I, li- I like the pause, I like the pause yeah, there, Nick. Be, uh, that what? might be Federer's last shot, of, certainly at Roland Garros. And I, I don't think... Uh, Quite a few people in the press room today talking about Federer's decline, slow decline from here on in, and uh, it's hard to disagree. I have to say. Oh, yeah, I mean, I, I think I think I probably agree with you. I like um, I liked your pause when uh, Rashid said my counterpart. I think you were probably thinking uh, who? But, uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's no response to that, really, is there? No, there really isn't. You get used to it, don't you? But um, what did you? <laughs> What did you make of what did you make of Songer and his performance? You are you. I thought he, yeah. No, listen, I thought he played well. I mean, he hit his backhand pretty well, which is obviously his, his probably weakest shot by by quite some distance, and that's been an issue for him over the years. But I thought he hit that really well today. I just thought Federer looked cool. I thought he lacked intensity. Didn't look like he was particularly interested at times today. Yeah, he looked he very tired, didn't he? Just he? at the end, just just all round, I just thought it was a poor Federer performance. Okay, fair enough. What do you what do you make of? Um, what do you make of Songa's? Uh, do you think he's disciplined enough and sort of trusts himself enough to be able to hit through Ferrer? No, I, I think Ferrer's a favourite, definitely for that match. I think 
I think Perez a better clay court player than Songa. There's no doubt about that. I think whether he can plug into the crowd and get energised, I think he, he obviously is the guy. You know, if he can do that, uh, I just I just personally think over five steps, I think Perez a better player on this surface than, than Songa is. Not to say Songa hasn't had some really good results on clay, which he has, and you know made the semis in Monte Carlo this year. He's played really well with the, uh, and there's certainly a lot better than he probably has in previous years, but. For me, if it's a straight battle, I, I, I think Perez going to add a little bit too much for him. So Nick, I mean, if you if you do have this situation where Ferrer wins, is he yeah. always going to know the only reason he made the final of the slam was because Murray wasn't there? No, I don't think so. Oh, I mean, if you, you ask me if he's going to think that or others are going to think that. But he as well. I mean, he's never been in a slam listen, final. You know, that, that's you know, that's something that is never going to change. You know, that, that's, that's, back in the day when we, we had, it was a very similar situation when you when you had those women that were number one, Yankovic, Wozniacki, Safin, and those sorts of players. Yeah. All they did was win matches. They won tennis matches. That's all they had. When they got step on the court, that's all they're trying to do. Yeah. And Ferrer has done that his whole career. Yeah. He may not be the most attractive player to watch. He may not be the most marketable guy on the tour. You know, but you know what? <laughs> The guy is a, he's an unbelievable tennis player, and the way he's worked at his game and, and being at 31 years of age, playing the best tennis of his life, I tell you what, I think he deserves to make a major final. I really do. You know, there's so much talk about the depth of the game and whether or not outside of the big four there's a lot of depth. Well, you know, he's, he's been so consistent in the last 18 months for air that for me, if he makes a final, I think it's just deserves. Where do you think, um, moving on, that um, they're going to seed Federer for the All England because he's lost points. He was in the semis last year at Roland Garros. Federer, where do I think? Where do I? Where would I seed him? Where do you think they're going to seed him at the All England Club? Oh, they'll seed him high, Rashid. I mean, there's, there's, there's three or know, four. What he does on clay and what he does on grass is a totally separate, totally different thing. I mean, you know, the, the way he's been able to win a win with him, what is it, five, six times or whatever it is, seven. I think I think they'll yeah they'll they'll go they'll go high with it no doubt they'll, they'll keep it I mean it's, listen it's going to be it's going to be Djokovic one it's going to be Murray two it's going to be Federer um, three I would presume that's that's the way they'll go and yeah. Nadal they won't, they won't change they won't change the top four really because Nadal's is mm. Nadal in it Nadal would be five yeah. Nadal would be four Nadal would be four because he say he can't be other than anyone else because he's defending he's defending winners points here so he's defending two thousand points he can't get Anywhere. Yeah, but is he five in the world now? No, four. He went above Ferrer after Rome. Ah, oh, okay. okay. So he, but he had to win. He had to win Madrid and Rome to go above Ferrer, and he did it. Beat right. Ferrer in both events. Right. So okay. he'll stay at four. Now, uh, I mean, what I, I completely agree with you about Ferrer being, you know, uh, he's he's great. He's even great for the game. He's great to see, you know, what you can make of yourself if you're not as gifted as the other players, but. You know, I think he deserves to be in a Grand Slam final. I agree with that comment. But the issue you have is if he does make that Grand Slam final, he is going to get, un- you know, I don't want to say it, but, you know, he go- he walks on court knowing he's not winning that. Against Djokovic or against Nadal, he's not winning that match. And he's probably struggling for a set. A lot of people here that I've spoken to this, this couple of weeks, I mean, I actually think he's got, probably got a better shot against Djokovic than he has against Nadal, given the fact he's record against Nadal. Yeah, but probably. to be fair, yeah, I mean, it's a tough one, isn't it? You know, I, I agree with what you're saying, although if you look at the last couple of matches, he should have beaten Nadal in Madrid. He was two points away, had a four-in on top of the net, get match point against Nadal there. He wasn't blown away by Nadal in Rome either. He lost two in the third there. So he's not, his record is appalling. I agree with you. It's appalling against yeah. the top four. <laughs> um, but, but I think, you know, given the two players, if he did face Djokovic, I think he's probably got a little bit of a better chance. But for me... I think Novak's a strong favourite to win this event. I think he, no, he, you know, I just think, having seen what I've seen this week, for me, Djokovic is, I'd be very surprised if Novak doesn't win this thing. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I called Novak at the beginning. I think he's, you know, I think he's hitting the ball so well and he, oh. he, he stays up on the baseline, you know, better than anybody. So it's like when Nadal plays him, it's not, he's not playing one of his clay court people that he beats over and over again. Definitely. He's playing someone completely different. Yeah, I was actually commentating yesterday with Kevin Anderson, and he said to me that he practiced with Djokovic at the start of the tournament, and he's never seen him as focused on the single event 
as he has at Roland Garros. You've never seen him as disciplined and as sort of plugged in as he is these as he is now. And uh, you know, he had a little wobble against Carl Schreiber, but I think uh, I, just, I just think if it, if it is a Rafa Novak semi final, and uh, and of course we all know Rafa's record here. There's no doubt that Djokovic has the pattern to play, and he knows the pattern to play and how to employ them against Nadal. And no other player can do that. We've seen that people try. You know, Nishikuri tried it a couple of days ago. Pognini's come close this week. People are beginning to learn how to play rapper, I think, slowly on this court. But Djokovic is the only guy that can actually execute. Yeah. And I think he will. Yeah, I, 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 I do agree with you. So... But it's it's quite it's quite a tough one. Sorry, going back to going back to Ferrer and Songa, it's it's quite a tough one for me because, you know, even if it's if it's a Ferrer Nadal final or if it's a Ferrer Djokovic final, I probably won't watch. If it's a Ferrer, if it's a Nadal Songa or a Djokovic Songa, I'll watch because you know that Songa has the potential to yeah. light it up and yeah. go bananas, get the crowd going, you know, and it'll be really entertaining to watch. Um, sure. Because he has obviously the weapons to really make their lives uncomfortable, and you don't know what you're going to get with him. So, you know, it's, it's quite it's quite a tough semi final, isn't it? Because you kind of feel, yeah, you'd like to see Ferrer yeah, get it, no, but it I, I would agree with it's you. better for the tournament. In a way, if in a way gets there. that's a sport issue. That's not that's not necessarily an issue for this event. That's an issue for the sport. Oh, going definitely. Forwards. Because because when Federer goes in a in a year or whatever it is, and I don't think it's too far away to be honest. When he goes. You know, we were just discussing some moment ago. We we need we've got to have people that are going to step up and sell this because it is such a massive. It's going to be such a massive void when Federer and Nadal leave this sport. That right now there's there's not too many people coming up behind. You know, a lot of people may have, have been talking about Dimitrov, but Dimitrov's done nothing in his yeah, career realistically. He hasn't won a title so far. He's won eight matches at majors in his career. Yeah, and, he's... And, and, and you know, and, and I think people are grasping at straws a little bit to try and find these next these next crop of players but at the moment there's no one there's simply no one of, of the younger generation that's coming through no I mean but but that's that's sort of you know you're looking at you're looking at tennis going in the way of obviously you get a lot more people I think the average age of people in the top 100 are is a lot older now so you know the younger guys are struggling I uh, completely agree with you about Dimitrov he, he's looking lightweight really um, I, think, looking... I think one of the things as well again having spoken to people about him He's done a lot of physical work that he hadn't done before, you know, and he's still undergoing that sort of transformation and learning and learning and taking on board the amount of work that's required. So I think his body is probably still adjusting there to, to those yeah. changes. And, you know, he's only 21, 22. As you said, look, at, look, there's four guys here over 30 in the quarterfinals. That's the first time since 82 in a major. We've had four guys over 30 in a quarterfinal. So this is a continuing trend, a continuing theme in the sport that it's now... You know, 32 or 31 is almost the, the new 21 or the old right, 21. I'm going to ask you to trust yourself here. I'm going to ask you to back yourself because I'll know it. And this will scare you. You're going to ask me to back myself, you say? Yeah, yeah. Who were the four over 30-year-olds in the 1982 last eight? Jeez. Good question. I have no idea. I read it, I read it as a statistic this morning. I, got, I have no idea. Okay. Do you know? Um, yeah. Andre Jimeno was one of them. Yeah. Um... Sorry, Gomez was one of them. Um, yeah. Andre Gomez was one of them. Um, Which slam? French. It was French. It was um, US Open. US Open it was. Oh, I think you were talking about the French. No, US Open. Oh, US, no, US, US Open in 1982. The, the that's last time oh, that's simple. That's Ken Rosewall. Over 30 in the last eight of a major. Yeah. I think it was the 82 US Open. That's Ken Rosewall. Um, that would be uh, Jimmy Connors. Yeah, I was going to say Connors. Must Connors, be Ken Rosewall. Uh, not Segura. Uh, who's the other guy? Pancho, not not Pancho Gonzalez. Uh, Tom, not Tom Walker. Yeah, Tom Walker. And the fourth was Passarel. I'm gonna go with. I I have no Just type idea. Type in 1982 US I have, Open. I don't know. I don't 1982. Know. I have no idea. US Open last 16. Uh, one nine eight. If I got this right, I mean, I, I reckon you've got to bring me back some French stuff. Like, what do they sell in France? Frogs? Uh, they, bread. Dead dogs? <laughs> bread? What else? What else do they do that's good in France, Nick? What else is good in France, did you say? Yeah. Tennis-wise or socially? Socially. Yeah, tell us a little bit about, I mean, I, I, you know, you're out there commentating on a slam. I mean, it's hard work. Everyone seems to think that being a commentator is easy. 
you've got to do a hell of a lot of research. You've got to go from the media place to one booth to the next. What do you do in the short periods of downtime you've got, knowing that at well, any moment... Yeah, this is the first night we've been out for dinner and actually gone back to the hotel first because every night we've been coming here, but leaving here about 9, 9.30. Last night we finished at 9.30, we came off there. Um, it's been late night. Just, just a short plug for those of you that are watching Touch Tennis Show. If you are out and about, you tune into Radio Roland Garros because that's where I'm working this week. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I mentioned this on the show. So how do you do that? The Roland Garros app, two minutes. So you just download the Roland Garros app on your iPhone or something? Yeah, or you can, or you can use TuneIn Radio app. TuneIn, we're also on the TuneIn Radio app. So if you're out and about and you've got a smartphone, your iPhone, whatever it is, and you TuneIn. want to know what's going on with the tennis, use the TuneIn Radio app or the uh, Roland Garros app and you can find our radio service on there. Cool. Thank you very much for that. What and date do they have to be born Pleasure. What date do they have to be born in? Um, hang on, Nick, before you go, just quickly going to check they have yep. to be born after or be in. Yeah. What are you on about? They have to have been born okay. after, na- before, 19... 19- uh, 1950, obviously. Before 1950. Before 1952, they would have to be born. Okay, so okay. McEnroe was in it. Yep. Too old. Uh, sorry, too young. Okay, too young. 52, he's in 56. No, uh, he played Gene Mayer. Are you looking at the draw? Yeah. I can just tell you if the names were right or not. They're old enough, um, believe me. No, you were nowhere near. I, got, I didn't get Connors, I didn't get Rosewall, no. I didn't get Connors. Arthur. You got Connors. Yeah, Rosewall. No, nope. he wasn't there after nope. seventy nine. When did he retire? Don't know. Okay. What about Ocker? No. Nope. Passarell? No. Nope. I got one out of four. Yeah. That's Rod- staggeringly bad. Connors played Rodney Harmon. Okay, I'll tell you yes. who they were. Both by Tom Gullickson. Gullickson. He would have been old enough. He'd have been one hundred and three by then. <laughs> um, um, so where's this? Is section one? Where are we looking no, at? Here? Don't, there. Quarters. There. The quarterfinals. There. Okay. So. Vilas would have been old enough. Guillermo Vilas was old enough by then. So Connors would have been old enough by then. Um, would have been have to be um, Mayer and Warwick. Or Gullickson. Gullickson and Warwick. Probably. Gullickson and Warwick, yeah. Mayer was too young. All right, cool. Cool, thank you very much. I was right as always. <laughs> <laughs> we're never in doubt. Uh, no, never in doubt. Nick, thank you so much. and We look forward to speaking to you next Tuesday or maybe even seeing you when you're back. And... Uh, Congratulations. Pleasure, guys. No All the best. Take Cheers. care, mate. Bye. Take it easy. Cheers, guys. Uh, if you're wondering where my buzzer is, we played this game out in the garden. My daughters and I had a bucket of cold water, and they had to answer a question. If they got it wrong, I poured the bucket of water over their heads. It was a hot day. And if they got it right, I hit the buzzer. So that they knew to not be so You tense. do know maybe someone from child services might be watching this. <laughs> and hey, there was no ice in the water. It wasn't going to hurt. It was just going to sting a bit, you know? Man up if you can't take it. But yeah, we thought it was, I thought it was a hysterical thing to do. Now, as I said, one of the things we were doing earlier on was we had Chris outside and um, me hitting some spectacular one-handed backhands, i got to say, uh, but still getting hosed. Um, and we did a video. We're going to post that up on the site, um, on the YouTube channel for the Touch Tennis Show as well, and on the site, just demonstrating what Chris was trying to say about the, the, the power that Songa generates in his forehand and the difference between that and, let's say, um, a conventional forehand. And, and uh, you know, he talked about upper body rotation and stuff, but stuff that was way too technical for me because I just use gifts. I don't need to think about things like that. Yeah, because you pay people and they gift you the match. Yeah, yeah exactly, <laughs> gifts. Here you are, sir. Thank yeah. you for the money. Exactly, exactly. So. Um, but that's that. I mean, Chris Wilkinson said he was going to call him, but he didn't. Chris Wilkinson is a uh, former um, fourth rounder one year and a third rounder the following year at the All England. Um, but I schooled him at table football. I absolutely schooled him. Two weeks we played for at Eurosport while we were commentating together. Oh, it was painful. No one cares. Yeah, they do. <laughs> Table football is a legendary sport. Um, and I'm yet to be beaten by anyone on the Touch Tennis Tour at Table Football. Simple as. Fair enough. Fair on enough. that amazing note of humility. Um, and it's, Oh, hang on. That could be him. All right. There you go. Gimp finger. Oh, it's the Touch Tennis Show. Hello, guys. It's the magician. It's the magician. Ah, no, again. Slips in at the end. <laughs> what do you want? Ah, uh, well, I thought we'd break up all the clay court talk and talk about the grass that's coming up. Yeah, exactly. Clay is so last year. Now that Federer is out, I don't even want to talk about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, I mean, that's a good point about Federer. I, I don't know if you covered it on the show. I caught it about ten minutes late. Sorry about that. But um, what do you guys reckon? Do you reckon Federer will win a slam again? Yeah, without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah. Um, but it'll be somewhere. It'll have to be bullet quick. It'll have to be at the All England. 
Um, right. and, or maybe the US Open. And it has to be a favourable draw. You know, he needs someone like, uh, someone to take out Novak, and he needs to yeah. meet a Murray in the final. That's the only way. Uh, I can't see him getting through Novak and Nadal. I can see him doing Novak and then a Ferrer in the final, but I can't yeah. see him doing Novak or Nadal in the finals of a slam at the moment. So you're, ask, you're asking quite a lot there. You basically need one of the big four to get injured and then somebody to just play outrageous to beat the other one. Yeah, I mean, possibly. Pretty much. Because he, he's not, he's not going to beat... I can't see Federer beating Nadal or Djokovic in a slam again. Mm, see, I disagree there. I mean, you, he, the way he dealt with Songa at the Australian Open earlier this year on his possibly his worst surface, I think clay's actually quicker. The only difference at the Aussie is that the bounce is even. Yeah, It's always the right bounce. But you put him up against Djokovic at the All England. I mean, he schooled him last year. And, yeah, and, he, and then Murray afterwards. I can't that, see it. What, you think he's changed that much in a year? I don't yeah. think Djokovic has gotten any better. Yeah, because he got, I mean, let's be honest, he got lucky to beat Murray. The roof closed. He got lucky, it rained. That's not luck. You're in the final, there's no such thing as luck. Yeah, but if it hadn't have done that, Murray would have taken him. Could have. No, would have been all over him. Ah, he was all but, over him. What do you guys reckon about Federer's determination these days? I mean, you know, you can't take anything away from him. He's definitely the best player tough, ever. Man. I think he was tired. That yeah, match against yeah, Simon took a lot out of him. Like, getting a lot older now. Maybe just thinking tennis is done for him, you know? No, I don't think he's thinking that. No? I think he enjoys playing. I don't think he yeah. enjoys necessarily, and I think Chris and I were talking about this earlier, it, 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 it's to do with ego, and you were saying. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think he's, you know, I think, <clears throat> I think he needs to accept that he can't, he can't, go toe to toe with these guys and that's that's what he has trouble doing. I think he needs to accept that he has um he has weapons that you know these guys don't have but I just I don't think he's confident enough to use it. You know, things like the slice, things like the yeah. you know coming to the net that's I don't think he's quite figured out exactly his most effective way of using it and he just thinks because he is the greatest of all time, uh Ooh. he thinks uh he thinks that he can go toe to toe with these guys, and he, he doesn't think he should have to adapt his game style. Yeah. But he has to appreciate that the game's evolving, and he needs to use his other skills. Yeah, that's true. Do you know the one yeah. thing I found about Federer in the last four years, um, outside of indoor tournaments, the one thing I've noticed more than ever is how much further off the bounce he is. Just not quite moving as efic- as effectively as efficiently. You know, what Federer did to Hewitt when Hewitt was at the peak of his career and Federer worked him out after getting beaten again and again and again, he was taking the ball on there, hard as hell, thumping it out in front of him, right by his front foot. Now he's hitting everything about there and he's eight feet behind the ball. He's letting the ball bounce up on him. And I I just think that he was always so dominant and aggressive. He has this gift that he can take the ball on the rise. No one else can do that. Djokovic to a degree that side, but not this side. No one else can do what he does with his hands. But then again, is that is that Federer getting slower, yeah. or is that the game getting faster? Because I guarantee Djokovic is hitting the ball harder than Hewitt did in his prime. Hewitt, yeah, yeah. Hewitt was lightweight. He but I still think that Agassi hit through the ball flatter and, and just as hard as Novak. Probably, yeah. Um, yeah and so, enough. and he was taking that on the rise in the 2005 finals of the U.S. Open when Andre was playing Federer. And it went to four sets and could easily have gone five. Mm. Andre was thumping the ball, corner to corner. And Federer was hitting backhand winners off it. You know, balls this high off the ground. Just going, yeah, I'll just have that on the rise. Mm. And Agus is just not as good a mover as Jip Novak. But again, that's very easy. Well, very easy. It's a lot easier to do off a flat ball. Yeah. Novak hits it hard with a bit of with a bit of work on it. And as soon as there's a bit of work on it, that time becomes a lot tougher. Yeah. So maybe, you know, maybe it's just the evolution of the game. I mean, it's a, it's a tough one. What do you think, Magic Man? Yeah, no, I mean, I totally agree with everything you're saying when you're talking about whether he's too slow or the game's a lot faster. That, that's why I was worried that maybe his determination and drive's not there anymore. You know? Well, let's talk about determination and drive when you get older. I mean, when we played a few sets and then we, we put all the money on the last set you and I played and I'm what? 12, 13, maybe even 14 years older than you? Yeah, yeah. What happened in that last set? Well, I wasn't able to cheat because I put the ball in the net. You know, I wasn't able to hook you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we saw some slow-mos of uh, some brutal <laughs> hooking from uh, 
the magician there. Basically, this is how you, you, Magic Man makes you think the ball's out when it's actually nine tenths in. Because <laughs> he's such a nice guy. Yeah, he just, yeah. <laughs> and also his hair covers the course. You can't see the ball. Obviously. Obviously. Now, there is actually a, there's an art to hooking. If, if, you know, I'll tell the viewers at home how you do it. What you do, right, you're playing the first game and your opponent hits the ball out by about a foot long, but you play it on, you know, you just play it on, and they're like thinking, wow, this guy's safe, you know, he's like, he's a nice guy. And then, you know, you do that a few times, points that don't really matter, so if they're 40 love up on their serve, and then it gets to a tight situation, and you can just call line balls, and then, if, you know, if you played it well, they won't even question you, you know. But, and if they do question you, you go, come on, mate, I, I would have called that one earlier, wouldn't I, you know? So I think I think the admission of cheating is definitely docking him some ranking points. I think you, just for that, the Touch Tennis Federation is going to um, unseed you at your own event this Sunday. <laughs> so tell us about this event you've got this Sunday, because we need to get back to our game of pool downstairs, and you're wasting my time. Oh, sorry, mate. Well, yeah, basically, I've got the event down in um, down City and Bowling, Kent, and uh, it's all on grass. We've got six sorry, um, Elliot. You know, been, sorry, no can you hang on? Racing. Elliot. Elliot playing over and over and over again and yeah it looks like it's going to be a pretty good event he's not listening so hang on a second I just need to translate that for the viewers so when he says down in Bourne in Kent what he's saying is down in Sittingbourne in Kent um, <laughs> carry on young man where was that <laughs> uh, it's down in Sittingbourne in uh, Kent that's better yes and um, what time are you yeah, kicking come, off come along it'll be great what time are you kicking off It'll be kicking off at 12, and, 12. Uh, but we'll be starting at 11. Yeah, to get people a... to come along and just have a good yeah, old yeah. hit. Cool. Any food available? Yeah, there's plenty of food available. Cool. And, Willis um, will be We've got loads of like, six aside football matches all over the place, so there'll be a great atmosphere. Sweet. Plenty of people around watching the sport. Okay, well, we're going to be giving away a couple of baseball caps with uh, a signature on them from the GOAT. Um, you know, Sweet. I think to the winning doubles team, which is probably going to end up being me and Hassan, if you're honest. Probably will. Can you see anyone getting past us with my volleys? Well, yeah, the way your volleys are at the moment, no. And half them at the back, yeah, dangerous. Yeah, yeah. Dangerous. scary combo. All right, Al. Clo- I've got Chloe in his football. <laughs> oh, awesome. Yeah, we'll bring Chloe down as well. We can have him foot faulting and just call even when he doesn't foot fault. Say this, <laughs> the serves a foot image, say, yeah, just long because you're foot faulting, mate. <laughs> Beautiful. All right, magician. Thanks for calling, buddy. All right, guys. Cheers. We want to thank you again for uh, tuning in, everyone that called in and watched tonight. Uh, we'll be back next Tuesday again, and hopefully we'll have sorted out our act and be on on time. Yeah. And I really do hope we got a Songa Djokovic final or a yeah. Songa Nadal final. Please, Ferrer, just just tank because I mean you don't deserve to be in a final if you're only going to get cuffed when you get there. And a uh, Songa, I, I think Songa Djokovic. I th- I'd, I'd rather yeah. see that because Songa won't beat Nadal. Yeah, and you kind of have that sneaky feeling that he might get under Djokovic's skin if the crowd start going mental and things like that. Yeah, the song, you know, Djokovic like, that won't be loved. That won't affect Nadal. Yeah, Nadal Rafa will be like, like I, I hit the ball yeah. in more times than you. So I have tapas and I have tequila <laughs> and you know, and my forehand is very good. Then play very good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, good. Simple. And then I'll, oh, hold on, just yeah, pluck those out as well. Exactly. Quickly. All right, thank you very Take much for tuning in. See you, See you next week.